Alrighty, so the good news is the Conquest is actually going to end up back together before the Cadillacs. Who knew? From a random spur of events. Paul was on the Ebays like we usually do. It's our favorite game on our phone. <laughs> and uh, he he switched up what he was searching for the cranks. He just searched like a 2.4 liter, right? Yeah. Some of that nature. And uh, yeah, guess what popped up? A completely brand new crank. Actually, well, is it's, it a machine crank? It's machine. So it's a machine down crank. But it came with bearings, the crank and cam bearings, so freaking easy. Uh, so basically, we're good to go. We have another crank for the 4G64, so hey, if you need a crank that's bored uh, or that's really bored. machined down to 1.0, so basically it's on its last limb. On the mains. Uh, hit up Paul. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get this thing put back together. Um, he bought a new rod from their Eagle Rods, right? Yeah. So we we bought a brand new Eagle Rod to replace the one that looks like it got some heat in it. So that way, hopefully none of that shit goes bad. Um, and we we did all that right. You had to weigh it, call them, send them the part number, and tell them the weights, and then they send you a new one for like a hundred and like forty dollars, wasn't it? Like one sixty after shipping. Yeah. So they saw him coming. But hopefully it'll all go back together. So all we got to do is uh, he's been cleaning this. He cleaned all the uh, old bearings out of it. So, yeah, I mean, other than that, just uh, assembly process. Get the crank in, get the pistons back in. We're going to reuse the piston rings. Also going to reuse the head gasket for the third time because, yes, third time is the charm. A head gasket is easy to replace, so yeah. except for when knowing our luck, a head gasket would go and it would start knocking. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, all right, let's get this thing back together and back in the car. All righty, so getting the crank torqued in. So torquing it down, we did uh, in two stages, tightened everything down to 20 foot pounds and then finalizing it out to 50 foot pounds. We think that's right. Don't tell us if it's wrong. We'll find out later. But tell us if we're wrong, because then I can tell him and he can think about it every day of his life now. Considering by the time you guys see this, uh, by the end of the video, it'll be doing polls on the street again. So it'll be too late. It'll already be knocking by the end of this video. <laughs> Please God, no. Was this the only crank they had? Or can you get more? I don't know. If you can get more, you better buy another. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so, and then you got to check it for good measures. It's true. But, uh, yeah, so we're using assembly lube and all that good stuff. Uh, unfortunately, this crank came with a little Looks rust like a little rust on there. It looks like it was, like, made a long time ago. Look at that box. thing has seen better days. But hopefully it should work just fine. Uh, we're going to just use, like, a rag and some oil and just kind of rub the rust away. Hopefully that is uh, what makes the dreams happen. So, but uh, yeah. Oh, does it spin? Sure shit. Like a dream. So, look at that. Ready to bend again. We took uh, the other crank to a machinist because we're like, well, we can't get that other bearing. So maybe we'll go see if a machinist, you know, well, maybe he can machine it down or whatever for, and it's not too bad. Uh, but apparently it was bent, so. Quite a bit. Ripperino. So, got us good. But yeah, now we continue. Alrighty, so, pistons are all in. Um, for sake of when we look back at this and be like, why the fuck did this blow up? Uh, we put the dots forward, and the, uh, the tangs are facing, what was it? Exhaust? No, intake side. Intake. So, Tangs are facing, what the fuck direction is that then? This way. So, but yeah, and uh, we just cleaned up this face. We're going to probably get that oil on there. Uh, we went ahead and got the, um, what is that? The balancer delete. So we, yeah. we got this guy on there and then that little delete guy put in. Uh, we also had to block off this and JB Weld and all that good stuff. So that's good. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to go ahead and. Get that on, and we're good to go. Alrighty, so we got the front cover on. 
and uh, put a dipstick in. So, big progress. But that's all we're going to be doing today. I'm going to have to go get, I'm going to have to go down to Jeff's and uh, borrow his welder again and weld that. Or we go to Troy's, one of the two, big money Troy. And uh, yeah, we'll figure out what we end up doing there because we're just going to weld that on because we're having issues. And uh, hopefully that'll not be an issue because that was kind of annoying when it spewed coolant and all that crap. Yeah. Alrighty, we out. Alrighty, so you remember how we got this back together? Okay, yeah, we're taking it back apart. He's literally uh, torquing down the rod bolt again to 75 foot pounds. <laughs> we never left that far. So uh, <clears throat> basically, we're flipping them around because we had the tangs facing the intake side. And now we're switching them to the exhaust side. So we had to pull the piston out, put them back in, flipped. So the dots now face that way, and the tangs face towards the exhaust side. So that's wrong. Don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> if we just fucked it up, we had it right, and we <laughs> fucked it up, don't say anything, but probably point it out. All right, so day two progress. Uh, we got the water pump on there. Went over to Jeff's again and uh, spooged some uh, aluminum welds on there. Be sure to comment, my welds are trash, because we know that, at least with aluminum, 100%. I mean, look at them intake welds, beautiful. <laughs> That's even grinded down. Uh, and then, so we got the heads uh, torqued down to 105. Paul was on the edge of his feet. He's ready to go home because he's stressed out now. <laughs> uh, but we got the timing stuff on, so this is all ready. And like we we had to pull the key out of this old crank and put that all that stuff on, so that's all good. Um, I think that's all we got so far. And then uh, wherever the fuck it is, it's sitting down there. Uh, we had to pull off the turbo manifold because it was cracked in two spots from where we can only assume too much timing. It's getting way too hot, I guess. So, who knows? Can you check these? Yeah. Like that crack right there? It'll be fine. Like the crack I can literally see? Nah, it's fine. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Thrill of a minute. That's day two. See you on day three. Okay, so some time has passed by, even though it's well, we skipped a day, so, but this is still like day three or whatever. So, Paul got the whole front end on there. Um, I was out on the ground, so I didn't film any of this crap. Uh, so, what you just did like half a tooth on the intake, right? Yeah. This one. So, this one is advanced or retarded to half? Advanced. This is, this one's advanced. This one's straight up and down. Uh, yeah. And both of these are back to normal. Yep. Because we're trying to, we're thinking we were running too much timing the last time. Or something of that nature. So we're just kind of going to chill it the fuck out. Mellow out. Because he's got the LS for when he wants to be fast. Oh. Sneaky fast. Yeah, real sneaky. This one's when you want to look fast, but you ain't fast. <laughs> it's bad. literally our cars to the T. Um, but uh, yeah. And then so oil pans on. And he just got the flywheel on and torqued. And oh. he's got the pressure plate. Oh, that torque. Okay. I was going to say, this is not torque. Yeah. Well, that one's like only like 15 foot pounds anyhow, but yeah, we'll get all that on there. Um, I think that's all. And we got the manifold is back on. It had cracks in it. I don't remember if I talked about that. I don't remember. But she had some cracks in it. So we went ahead and splooged some more weld on there. He rewrapped it and put it back in. He did some nice Allen heads this time, stainless too, because the studs kind of screwed him pretty good. He cut his hand up a bunch on the fucking head. And, uh, yeah. So I think that's about all we got so far. And, uh, pretty much I think we're almost ready to put her in the car. So hopefully the next clip will be in the car and see how far we've hooked it up before I remember I need to film. Alrighty. So it's back in. Turbo's just sitting on there for right now. Um, this side of the motor is pretty much done. Um, starters in, starters wired, fuel injectors are in. Um, I think the only thing we got to do is attach the fuel pressure regulator, if it ever was. I don't remember. No, it was just chilling. Okay, so, so I think that side's all good. Throttle cable's hooked up. Um, obviously we got to do some vacuum lines still. Um, oh yeah, map sensor needs a vacuum line. Um, but yeah, so then we got to do 
put the coolant and all that, like the radiator, all that stuff back in. Um, we got a clock turbo. We got to make a new downpipe. We pretty much just got to extend the downpipe. So now to see if it starts. Woo! Uh, there is no exhaust on it, so we're pretty much just going to start it, see if it starts. Uh, there's no wide band on it either, but it should still start in theory. Ready? Yep. Too easy. 55 oil pressure. Good. That's what I like to see. Uh, we'll have to do an oil change on it pretty much really fast. Like right now. But <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, that's all I got so far. We got to uh, do some exhaust crap and then it should be done. But that'll be a different day now. So probably tomorrow. All righty. So we just redid the downpipe. Basically, we had to chop off some stuff. Well, the new, this is like a four bolt. I don't even know, four bolt flange, whatever. Uh, we're figuring this is gonna work better so that way at least it can't move on us. I think this actually should work real good for this setup. Um, and uh, so yeah, we just got done with that. Uh, we welded a new V-band onto that resonator and then we're gonna just do like a this, chop this and have it kick out to the side. Should work for now until we feel like getting around to doing a full exhaust again. Uh, well, full exhaust as in, uh, downpipe back we don't need a downpipe all righty so we've had a couple little snags here and there we had like a little leak on the oil pan we just blooped some rtv over it don't worry professional repair uh other than that i think it's been all right we had to put it or we didn't really have to probably but we put a new oil drain on because we thought that was what was leaking it wasn't um and then obviously we got the intakes there are the charge pipes all on there Intake air temp, uh, coolant is wired in. Um, we got the idle adjusted. Um, it's doing pretty good so far. We're about to take it on its maiden voyage. Um, we're swapping over batteries. Oh yeah, and the fuel pump we bought like Paul bought like this double this thing. It's like a double fuel pump thing. We were gonna do it on the Cadillac. Now he's gonna have to get some. Good well, he's gonna have to get some good pumps good and pass. and get some. Uh, Get some good pumps, and on top of that, get those things replaced because they're garbage. So, I already had one uh, that I was going to put in mine because I actually took Paul's, but I just sold it to Paul for a deal, so that way I don't have to worry about swapping them over. And uh, yeah, so that way I don't lose because it's a fifty-dollar pump, and I got a nice used one. So, but whatever, convenience. Uh, so, yeah. Oh yeah, and then I put my old battery tray in from the Fiero in there, so now his battery's like actually stable. Don't mind that one. That one's loosey goosey, but that's fine. That wasn't part of the game plan. So that was literally just in case uh, it doesn't want to start on this one because this is kind of seen better days. It's like a diesel truck. You need two batteries. When's that one expire? Oh, she's expired. She's expired, boys. Value power. That's not a power plate, is it? No, that's Walmart. Won't be surprised. That's the Fiero battery. Possibly. Wonder what happened to the other one. Because I don't even know how. Oh, right there. There's the farm fleet one. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So other than that, we're gonna go test it, test drive it, do a little tuning on it, and then we should be good to go. Alrighty. As you can tell, I literally lived like just past that way, and uh, yeah, we made it real far. What you gotta say for yourself, pal? We're hoping that it's out of fuel. Hopefully. Uh, cause it's basically ran out of fuel pressure which is literally makes no sense considering we've put in two pumps. So maybe that other pump might not be bad. But uh, yeah, so now we're waiting. Uh, we sent Morgan back to go grab uh, a couple of things, uh, fuel, so we should be good. Um, guess we'll come back and see if that's the way. All righty, so he got like, what was it? Four and a half gallons. You put all four and a half in? Yeah. All right, yeah, so he put four and a half gallons in. Now we're gonna have to pretty much, are we gonna, we should probably stop at a gas station, fill up one of those again. Or both. It yeah. should make it to the E85, but yeah, just, to be, just to be smart. Stop at mobile. Yeah, and we should probably get some like foods or something too. But uh, yeah, so it's good. Just ran out of gas. We, I, 
Because I asked him, I was like, is there going to be enough gas in here or whatever? It was like, are we going to make it far enough? And he only put on like a couple, like... But 37 miles. Though. Yeah, 37 miles on the trip odometer. So it should have been good, but we totally forgot that we, we drained a lot of the fuel out. I don't know why, but... We were burning something. Yeah, we burned something, but yeah. So we're here. We're waiting for the cop back there to let us go. Uh, he saw the garage and like, these guys are a piece of crap. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, once we're free to go... We'll uh, be good. Or if anyone's got bail money, help. help. All right, well, it's nighttime now. And uh, we finally got some Culver's. If you're from Wisconsin, eat it. Doesn't Florida have a Culver's? I think so. Eat Culver's, it's delicious. Their cheese curds are great. Uh, yeah, so the, the place we usually get our E85 from, uh, they must be out. Probably it's probably- short, There's a shortage. Is there? Yeah, they're using it for hand, hand sanitizer. Oh no, race cars are more important. But uh, yeah, so we got some E85 here from Quick Trip. Also the best place in the world. More more better than Culver's, it's true. Flex like sort that of thing? Weird flex, but all right. So yeah, we'll all eat some food and then we'll be heading home. Uh, we haven't really had any other hiccups. Uh, we stopped and filled up the other gas and it had a high idle, so we kind of fixed that. Just adjusted the idle screw. Um, seems to be doing alright so far, so we'll go from here. Alrighty, so hopefully you can hear me over window noise, but uh, yeah, it's uh, running. It's been an interesting day of uh, first drive, but it's to be expected at this point. So, just dialing in the tune here. We just filled up with the D85, as you guys seen. It was basically empty, so, but uh, yeah, I guess that's uh, all I got so far. I'll see if I have anything else that's going to be of importance. I'll probably wait one more day so we can get some actual boost pulls in. Paul's got to update the timing table to a little bit less aggressive uh, timing setup. We're thinking that might be kind of part of the problem. So I think it's a lot of little problems I added up into that, but we're going to try and play it safe now. But uh, yeah, she's running 68 at idling. But people let us work again. Woo! <laughs> Things are just starting to work. Let's go, boy! But uh, yeah, I guess that's all I got. Hopefully, in the next couple clips or whatever, you guys will see some full poles in the daylight. Or half full poles, whatever. Three days later. Okay, guys, so I think I'm gonna finally, uh, well, I guess this is the end of the video. So, yeah, we're going to end this one on a bad note because we got it all back together, got it out on the road, did some tuning, then Paul was driving it back and forth or whatever, and then he did a dig race with uh, Tanner's Focus, and uh, Paul won, but he had to ride home with the loser, so is that a win? We'll never know. But, uh, yeah, we're pretty sure... It's either clutch issue or transmission. My money's on transmission. Paul's hoping for a clutch. Honestly, whatever's going to be cheapest. Uh, the nearest freaking transmission for this thing is uh, Michigan or Minnesota, something like that. So, yeah. If you have a transmission for a Conquest, uh, hit us up in the comments. Um, yeah. It runs. And now it goes nowhere, so that's kind of good. And then we'll have the Cadillac coming soon. That should be this weekend. Um, and the cat or the Fiero's doing as good as it's ever going to be. So um, I guess that's all I got. So you guys know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys in the next one. And let's just get a an F in the chat for uh, Paul.